threw out all the species that were labeled triple S, being sentient, sapient, and spacefaring, Earth was looked at as a joke. A simple ant colony, a rodent colony, something that they could study. But to do this with a type of species that could have the potential of being spacefaring, they had to pull a few tricks. In some cases, they sent down a few of their own to try and teach the humans how to build, how to hunt, how to do things, to expand their knowledge. However, it was believed that they were expanding too fast, and of course, the species were forced to leave. Some did not leave, though. Some were forced to stay on the planet and burrow themselves as deep as possible so that they did not get caught up in their own war. As many species have fallen to warfare, this was not uncommon for a certain subsect of their species to end up somewhere else, somewhere outside the range of any. And since Earth was a no-go zone for anyone to go into, as no one was supposed to talk to humanity, they believed this would keep them safe. So other species watched over it, eventually placing a guard tower outside their own planet. Humanity would start to think that this was their moon, that they had an actual moon, which surprised many of those as they did not know it was there, and then one day it was. This changed the way humanity was because it suddenly had a gravitational pull on the planet itself. This changed the tides, this changed the weather, this caused a massive flood, this caused a lot of different changes, and it did force the last of those aliens living on Earth to leave, many of them leaving large constructs of stone behind. Yet afterwards, the humans lost their way and started to fight with each other to be the new gods, many of them being so absolutely narcissistically insane, believing that they were gods. But this would not be the case to control humanity, to make sure that they did not go into another level of existence. This guard tower, this what they call a moon, the satellite above their planet, was designed to make sure that their souls could not reach beyond their own planet, and to make sure that if they somehow reached beyond this tower, they wouldn't be able to get far. The quarantine zone was set up, a strong set of radioactive belts. This would not only protect the humans to make sure that the experiment could go unaltered, unmolested, they would be able to keep the humans locked up. Locked up in their tiny, tiny little cage they call planet. Everyone initially agreed on these rules, but after several millennia had passed, some of the species felt bad for humanity and wanted to reach out, but they didn't have a reason to. Some of them looked at humanity as poor lost ones, as they would never leave their planet. They would never know anything except their small little world. And yet, they suddenly got a reason very recently. They felt the two bursts reach out amongst the stars. This burst of energy reached out at a level that the humans themselves did not fully comprehend. Yet the bursts themselves, this dual burst, reached out to all the stars. This alerted all the species that humanity had reached what they call the Atomic Age. This Atomic Age had become a beacon in the night to let everyone know that humanity may be reaching spaceflight soon. They watched as humanity tried to reach their own space station but instead of actually reaching it, most of the species still laugh heartedly this day as they look at the fake footage that was made to make everyone think that they actually reached out and touched their own guard tower, their own monitoring station. Did they land on it? Many of the species are still content with believing that they've done this, and they believe this is as far as humanity would go and not push any further. Some of humanity seems to realize that this is not the case and there's something dangerous out there. So they started to pull back and not send any more of their chemical fueled piles of garbage into space to try and look for things. Yet they do send probes. These probes 
in comparison to what is out there are basically the equivalent of smoke signals in comparison to an early 21st century satellite. That is the major difference. So it's easy to hide from them, easy to avoid them, easy to let humanity believe that they are the only ones on the entire global galactic universal stage. And that suits everyone just fine. As humanity is seen as a dangerous loose cannon, they fight wars with each other, killing themselves off over and over again in massive numbers. Why? For territory? For mates? For money? This last one made them all laugh unbelievably hard. And they would enjoy watching the wars happen across the planet as they would send a few of their own probes to fly by. Yet, soon after the double burst, a few of the species decided to go in and check to see if humanity was reaching, still reaching for the stars. They sent a few of their own. And unfortunately for them, they didn't realize that humanity had already reached a certain level of technology. This technology, though crude, was enough to destroy the gravimetric drives of their ships, forcing them to crash, many of them spiraling out of control as the crew screeched in all sorts of languages, trying desperately to regain control as they would crash into the planet itself. Many, if they were lucky, were able to restart their own engines and fly away, getting far enough away from the gravimetric disturbance to actually get clear of the planet. Though others were still there. The humans quick to take all the pieces and hide them. It was difficult for the species to hide them, but as they looked on the primitive information channels, they realized that humanity was starting to release more and more images, more and more of the technology, but they were bringing it out at such a slow pace that everyone on the galactic community believed that it was a joke, it was a bad joke, and they just left them alone. Those that had sent the probes and lost their own people sent one warning. One warning to watch out for the loud ones. Be careful, because outside your own planet is a dangerous place. It was a simple message, of course, along with a picture of their own supreme leader. Yet, this was seemingly shoved off and denied by humans as a whole. As those who believed they had power wanted to retain it. And yet, several short decades later, several very short decades later, humanity, without the rest of the universe knowing, would allow their own people the technology Finally, a level of technology that they did not have to rely on the resources of their planet to live their lives, their own energy. They could actually have their own domiciles, their own cities, their own vessels, their own aircraft. Everything could be self-sustaining if they wanted to. And this technology changed everything. And without the rest of the universe knowing, they started to develop, they started to build, and they started to change. Though there were still conflicts on their planet, most of the universe just simply sloughed it off and didn't even care to look. They would see the numbers change as a large number of humans would be dying through war, famine, disease. This was typical. And they figured, whatever, we're just going to leave them alone to their own devices. But that few short decades was enough. Running down the circular hallway, an alien called Lestinac was trying desperately to get to the supreme leader of their colony. Lestinac was running as fast as she, he, it could as it was using its claws to go around everyone, seemingly running in a spiral formation to weave in and out of those who were walking down the hallway. The claws, along with the sticky adhesive on the bottom, made it ability to simply run this way. Reaching all sorts of heights of speed, Lastenac finally dropped down to their fore limbs and ran as fast as they could, running almost like a canine would, 
as they held the data pad in their jowls. Eventually, they got to the door, not even wanting to stop slamming into the door, and then, with shaking claws, started to get the code in so that she could open he it could open the door. Finally, the door opened, and Lassenac jumped up to its hind legs, pulled the data pad out of its jowls, and looked over to the Supreme Leader as it was in conversation with his council. They've they've done it! They've done it! Done what? Who? What do you speak of? This better be important, or I will have you flogged. The, the humans! The humans! They broke quarantine! What? How? They, they figured out the drives, sir. They, 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 they've driven... The, the drives, the, the gravimetric drives, the, the flux field capacitor, they, they figured out how... The... That is not possible. Our data shows that they are more than a century from even discovering this. How is that even... I don't know, sir, I don't know, but, but here, here. Last Knack went over and with a shaking claw handed over the data device. The Supreme Commander started moving its own claws across the surface, looking through all the information that popped up in front. There was a simultaneous, oh, shit, when they finally saw the image. The image of a triangular ship, clearly that of human design, finally reached beyond the barrier that was put in place. The barrier that kept them inside their own planet. The humans call it the Van Allen radiation belts. The rest of the universe called it a quarantine field to make sure the humans stayed put. But now, now the humans were beyond their control. Without skipping a beat, the commander said, hurry, hurry, put them back in quarantine. We can't, sir. Why not? There's more of them leaving, and we can't catch them all. Oh, crap.